Okay, hey, and welcome to another ICH2 video, and we're well over halfway now of this mini-series, uh, the Series 4 Prologue. Again, apologies if you're waiting for all of the new stuff. Trust me, so am I. There's <laughs> so much to see. There's so many train sets, the Midland Compound, the Blue Rapier. There's, there's tons to look at, but I've got to get through these. So, let's press on, and today it's a V-Trains, or Vi-Trains. I really still don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, and I think the only way I'm going to sort that is by actually phoning them up. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We know what we mean. Now, these are really, really good um, locomotives. They're really good models. Um, ignore the price there. This is actually the wrong box. And the guy in the shop, um, bless him, he let the wrong um, box go... Well, he let the correct box for my locomotive go with another locomotive. And so I had to have the box that the other customer should have had, basically. So yeah, this says uh, Class 3741, when actually, if I just show you, it's not 421, it's 427. So we're pretty close, aren't we? We're pretty close. So that'll do. But yeah, they're, they're fantastic. They're really, really good. I haven't got a Backman one yet to show you um, and to compare it with, but don't worry, that's sorted out in Series 4. So <laughs> you'll have to wait for that. But... I, these were fantastically um, priced. They were really, really competitive compared to Backman. I mean, Backman ones are usually about 70 or 80, uh, and this wasn't that. In the shop, this was about 45 or something like that. So, I mean, that is an absolute bargain, and you can get them online for really good prices too. But yeah, it's basically uh, the guys that left Lima um, over in Italy, they set up this company, and so, you know, yeah. They know what they're doing, and they have produced some fantastic Class 37s. It, to this day, it's still the strongest locomotive I have. It really is. And, well, in real life, come on, it's a Class 37, they're iconic. That shape is just... Well, it's almost like the, the red telephone box or the London taxi cab. It's just iconic. It is a classic, classic design. Also known as the English Electric Type 3 because they were built by English Electric. Um, and they're still in use. They're still running. Some of them are over 50 years old now, you know? Over 50 years old. That's as old as my dad. And they're still running. They're still running. That's just amazing. I tell you, they knew how to make them back then. <laughs> so yeah, they're still running, and the models are just as good as the real thing. Um, Batman's is probably at the top, being the most detailed and the, the highest quality, and then below that you've probably got these, and then at the bottom are the Hornby ones. But the Hornby ones are for budgets. Uh, they're for people on a budget. They're the budget range. Uh, they don't need to do a premium one. They do premium class 60s and premium class uh, 50s and stuff like that. So, right. Uh, um, now, I can show you the box, dead dead quickly, but as you've seen, the locomotive's already out of it, and there's a reason for that, there's a reason I'm not putting it back in, but look, again, fantastic quality box, really nice foam insert, that is where you get all your detailing. Now, a word of warning, whenever you buy a, a V-Trains, Vi-Trains model, you do get 8 billion tons of, <laughs> of detailing, that you get a bag in there that is chock-a-block, absolutely full. And the most annoying thing is if I just show you the manual, here are, here's my file. So if I just take the manual out for a class 37, look at this. You see, you get basically enough detailing to put on the entire model, you, to cover it from front to back, everything. Uh, but the thing is, your particular model might not need everything on it. So your particular Class 37 might not have snow plows, or it might not have um, some of these lamp hooks or something like that. So <laughs> it's really, really hard to know what to put on and what not to put on. And they don't really give you um, any instructions, any direction on what to do. Um, this is pretty similar to Backman in that it's like a list of replaceable parts. Um, the, the motors are really powerful, that's really good. Um, unlike the budget Hornby one, you do get one gigantic motor in the middle, um, which powers two flywheels and then twin shafts going down to each bogey. So that's powered, 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 and just the middle wheels are freewheeling. So there's 
absolutely heaps of haulage capability there, as you'll see later. In fact, there's a video on my class 37 and, and just how strong it is if you really want to look it up. So yeah, you get loads and loads of detail, an incredibly powerful motor. Um, it's DCC ready and there's a little blanking plate inside which you just take out if you don't want it. Okay, sorry for the jump cuts, I was interrupted by a plane. <laughs> it wouldn't be an ICH2 video, would it, unless I'm interrupted by a jet. You know, I used to love the sound of a jet engine, but now, now I do all these train videos, I absolutely hate it. I really, really do. I wish people would just refrain from going on Harley while I'm doing a video, it's so rude. Right, so, uh, yes, this Class 37. Very powerful motor and DCC ready as well, as you can see just there. So you get a little blanking plate inside which you just take out, pop your chip in, jobs are good. Um, there's nothing more to say really, there's not, nothing more to um, look at. They're the instructions for the Hornby Class 37, which, if I just wet my fingers, are very, very different. Yes, very, very basic model. So I'll put the instructions back in my folder. There we go, and close all of that up. So you have steam at the front and then diesel and then electric. Okay, so yeah, fantastic box, really, really nice, really high quality, delivers a locomotive to you really safely. Tons of detail in there, obviously that's where the model goes, but there's no way I am putting the model back in that section. And the, re oh, and the reason for that is, is, is this detailing. There's just so much detailing that you cannot put it back in the box, otherwise it'll all snap off. So let's have a look at the metal in detail. Right, so here we are. Here's the Class 37 in detail, and I'm gonna show you just what I mean about all of the detail. You see these lamp hooks on the front? Now they are not actually glued in. They're not fixed in properly. In fact, that one there looks like it's a little... Yes, that one's a, that one's quite loose. I'm going to have to reaffix that. Um, but they're not glued in. I have used tacky wax on them, which is why they're probably a little bit loose. Um, tacky wax is that little red tub I showed you ages ago. Um, see the video, the canada, um, for me showing you how to affix a headboard to a locomotive in the wrong place, apparently. So, um, yeah, that's tacky wax, and it's fantastic for lots and lots of detail like this, because if you do make a mistake, not, you know, you've not done any damage. The, with with poly-cement, um, obviously it can get a little bit risky, you can make a right mess of things, and poly-cement works by essentially melting the plastic <laughs> until it becomes one. But tacky wax doesn't do that. Tacky wax is just like, well, hair gel, to be honest, or a hair product. It's just really sticky, and it is hell. It it is currently holding these lamp hooks in place. Oh, did I just knock that one? Yeah. So I know that they're not um, affixed properly and as, as as good as can be, but you know I think for some parts of a locomotive where the detail is quite delicate and is really hard to do, tacky wax is a great solution. Then um, you've got sprung buffers. The snow plows did come in the detailing pack. That little bit there doesn't really move. Now, you have to decide what end of this locomotive you want to pull from because obviously if you've got um, the snow plow in that end, covering like, like that, you've got no room for a coupling because that's where the coupling is supposed to go. Uh, so at the other end, I have left it out and put the coupling in. The buffers are a little bit, mm, bit of cobweb. The buffers are, you know, unrealistic. They'd be dead grimy in real life, wouldn't they? They'd be really oily and, and worn and dirty. But, you know, that's for another video. Uh, we'll, we'll forgive them for that. Uh, it does light up as well. So, these three light up when it's coming towards you. <laughs> and these two um, just glow red as it goes away. But when I say glow red, you can barely see them. I don't know what the lights are like on the Batman one. Uh, you'll have to wait till series four for that. But, on this V-Trains, Vi-Trains, they're very, very dim, very hard to see, which, you know, it isn't... Well, some people might say it's great if you've got like a rake of wagons behind it, then you don't really want to see the red lights, do you? Because the red light would be on the back of the train, it would be over here on the end of a wagon. But if you're just running the locomotive, obviously you do need the red lights. So, hmm, it's a bit like that, isn't it? And then, 
the horns, the air horns up here, now I have glued those into place because they're much easier to do than all of the detail around the front. Um, so I have poly cemented those into place and that was dead easy, that was dead easy to do and it really makes it look nice. The fan doesn't spin, oh I know, I'm sorry, it doesn't spin, there's very few models where it does. Um, Hornby actually, Hornby are very good at making models where the fan spins, which is surprising. But you do get a really nice etched grille and you get all the rivets where the rivets are supposed to be. The livery looks fantastic, you've got the little warning signs there for the overhead uh, cables. The doors do not open, but you have got handrails, although they're not metal, they're plastic. So, all in all, I think you'll agree, it's a rather fantastic model. It really is. If you, because I say, as I say, you can get them for a good price. You can get them for like as cheap as forty pounds, and most of them are fifty, sixty. And Batman ones go for way more than that, unless you find one at a bargain price, which does sometimes happen. But yeah, you know, if you even if you're as loyal to Batman as <laughs> you know an, an Xbox three sixty fanboy is uh, to Xbox, then I still recommend giving them a go. I still recommend you having a look at them because they really are fantastic models. There is heaps of weight to it. It's one of the heaviest models in the entire collection. Uh, it has absolutely no problem with haulage at all. So what will be very interesting is when I do a video in Series 4 comparing this uh, Class 37 to a Batman Class 37. That will be interesting. So, I've talked about it loads, we've got a little bit about its history and its background, we know that they're famous, we know that they still run today. So, oh yeah, quickly, before I go, before I do the next part of the video, one of the reasons that this Class 37 by V-Trains, Y-Trains, is so powerful, is so strong, is because it cheats. <laughs> it uses traction tyres. Yes, I'm afraid so. As you can see, just there. And in fact, that traction tyre is about to disintegrate. It's about to wear out. And if we look at the other end, you'll see that it has actually worn out. You see that? You see that gap? So that, that wheel is going to have to be re-tired because the traction tyre is breaking away and falling apart. Which isn't very good, is it? Come on, we're not impressed with that. Okay, yes, it's really, really strong, but to have traction tyres on a model today, come on, that's just not very good. And they disintegrate, they fall apart, they dry out, they become brittle, and if you keep them in a warm room, they just literally disintegrate, which is not very good. So she's going to have to go into crew work, she's going to have to be retired, and I'll show you that in a separate video. So that's quite useful. <laughs> But, um, from a review point of view, it's not great. It's not fantastic. Um, she's only a couple of years old. Well, no, in fairness, she's three years old now, and she has done a lot of work. So maybe that's why it's disintegrated. But, we'll ignore it, put it on the track, and see how she runs anyway. Okay, so here we are at the layout, just make sure the track's all fixed down. I do that every time, don't I? I'm, I'm a proper OCD freak. <laughs> okay, so here is the Class 37 by V-Trains, Vi-Trains. We'll never know. And let's just make sure she's on the track properly. Lots of wheels. Um, it is made quite tricky by those, um, the, the wheels in the middle being freewheeling, and they slide from side to side as well. So. We just have to make doubly sure she's on. Yep, she is. Okay, so again, um, I picked this is the front of the locomotive, so that's where I that's where I put the snow plow in the middle and no coupling, and I put a coupling on the back. But we'll get a pulling a, 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 a rake of wagons later, shall we? Because that'll look quite cool. Uh, I think they're the same livery actually. Yeah, they're EWS ones as well, so that should look great. Okay, now she's DCCC. So, <laughs> I've just, I can't believe I've just swapped the controller over to DC, but actually it's DCC. So, I'll just swap it over again. Dead easy to swap it over on this little layout. Just whip out the analog one, or DC, 
and then you put the DCC wires in. And remember, white is not right. So white goes on the left, and the black one goes on the right. There we go. Just rest the cable there. Okay. So we're all wired in, all plugged in, everything's good to go. Let's switch the DCC controller on. Like that. Let it do a startup. Okay, now, according to my little book, I think this is number 20... 24. Yes, there we go, 24. EWS class 37. Hmm, noisy vehicle outside. Right, so 24. Press select. Okay, let's put the lights on. Ah, oh, hey, look at those. They are really bright. You can even see them reflecting off the skirting board there. And then if we put them on to the other direction... Um, no, can't see a thing. They, they are on, but they are so dim that it has to be pitch black to even see them. <laughs> so basically, I suppose the most realistic thing you can do with this, this Class 37 from V-Trains, Vi-Trains, is have it pull a rake of freight all the time and just get like a little red light on the back of the, the freight maybe. That would work. That would be very very cool. But the locomotive's red lights are yeah quite disappointing. Can't really see them. Anyway, let's give her a little wiggle. I like that. I like that term. I like I like that new invention I've created. It's basically just testing that you've got um, the right settings for her and you've got the right number and everything. Ah, look at that! <laughs> okay, its traction tyre has just come off. So there's no traction tyre there at all now. Well, I'll be... Yeah, I can see where it should have been, but it actually hasn't. Right, well, yeah, this video is going to have to be done in two parts, isn't it? The traction tyre has just come off. <laughs> it's just completely fallen away. It's so worn out and degraded and stuff. So, as we can see, we now have only one traction tyre left, and where that traction tyre was, there's just a, well, a tireless wheel. But because it's supposed to take a traction tyre, it's ever so slightly smaller than the others. And there's a tiny little mini flange on the outer side as well to stop the traction tyre from coming off. Well, to stop it from moving and stuff, you know. But with it coming away, we're going to have to replace that traction tyre and we might as well do the other one at the same time before we can continue with the video. So that is annoying, but if I'm going to do it, then I might as well do it properly. So apologies for that, but yeah. Um, it's this little useless, annoying traction tyre that's the culprit. So, you'll have to join me in part two. Right, okay, so here we are, part two, several days later, and here is the Class 37. And it's got new traction tyres. As you may remember, as you may recall from, well, to me it's days, but to you it'll be just seconds. Um, this traction tyre just came flying off as we tried to get the locomotive rolling. And then, oh, look, it's even, look how perishable it is, look at that, that's just terrible. Um, and that's probably the biggest downside to this, this locomotive from V-Trains, Y-Trains, is that they have this traction tyre and it does perish, it does wear out. Um, but we have new ones fitted. There, there it is, just there, and there's a new one down here as well. There we go. Can you see that? So make sure you watch the bonus video on how to fit traction tyres, um, because I think it's quite useful. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be asked loads of questions about it if I don't do it, so I've gone and done it. Uh, but again, yeah, I've got to be dead careful with this detail in the end, because it's only held on with tacky wax. It's not glued in, not like the detail on the top. That's actually glued in, so that's nice and nice and stable. Okay, so thankfully her snowplows are okay, and her coupling's okay, ready to um, pull a nice freight train for us. But I'm going to do a little test first. We don't need to do a strength test on her, do we? Because if you recall, I think it was about last Christmas or something, I did a strength test on the Class 37, and we were just all blown away. Well, there's a few naysayers out there. There's a few people that don't believe me. 
there's a few people that say that the Backman ones are better or um, that the Helgen Class 47 is dead strong and stuff. I just want to show you just how strong this locomotive is. Okay, and I know it might be cheating because it has got traction tyres and I don't think the Backman model has traction tyres and I don't think the Helgen one has traction tyres. So it might be cheating ever so slightly, but uh, well, it's something they've put in the designer into it. We can't, we can't avoid it. We might as well use it. We might as well enjoy it. So I'm going to show you what I've got lined up. Okay, you'll notice the camera is all nice and free today. It's not on a usual little tripod like I, I often do, and, and there's a reason for that. I'm just going to put this class 37 on the track. There we go. All nice. Um, lights are on straight away because the DCC controller is already powered on and set to go and everything. Um, but yeah, there's a reason why the camera is nice and free, and that's because if we pan around, right round here, you'll see that I've put the class um, Hawker Siddeley 4000 there, the uh, prototype locomotive from the 1960s. Uh, the Helgen model, and it's the heaviest locomotive I have. But wait, it gets more interesting than this. You see that class 08 there? Well now that's the Backman one. Um, that's not a Hornby one. And I'm afraid it's still DC so I can't use that in our test. But I have got the Hornby class 08. This is DCC and I've put it on. I'm going to select its number which is 23 and we're going to get it rolling around the layout and then it's going to collide, <laughs> to put it nicely, with this uh, Hawker Siddeley Kestrel and it's going, we're going to see if it can push the Hawker Siddeley Kestrel out of the way so here it goes okay now this isn't the premium 08 you'll have to wait for the video on that later this is the, the basic 08, this is their budget version but it's still a pretty good model, it's not too bad. So here we go, I'm getting close now. Ah, no, nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing, la la la. Right, let's slow it right down. Okay, and go again. Go on, push it, push it out of the way. No. If we just carry on like that, we're gonna burn the motor out. It's just not having it, is it? It does not want to know. Um, and the, the strength of this 08 isn't bad. It's not too bad. It will easily haul you know, a rake of six or eight coaches, no problem. But it just cannot push this Hawker Siddeley Kestrel out of the way because it's so heavy. If you check my database, I'm pretty sure it's the heaviest model I have. So, sorry, 08 by Hornby. Well, budget 08 by Hornby. Um, you're just not up to the job. Now, let's swing back round to the V-Trains, Vi-Trains, the train with two names, class 37. <laughs> 24, I think, is its number. Uh, let's just get it to flash for us. Yep, it's 24. Okay then, EWNS 37427. Let's see if you can push the Hawker City Kestrel out of the way. Okay. You can see that the power setting is, well, it's nothing at all, really. Here we go. Not a problem. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. In fact, it's caused the Class 37 to come off the tracks, and it's caused the Helgen to come off the tracks as well. See, that's the power of this model. It, there is nothing it can't push or pull. If you recall from my um, video last Christmas, Half of the train derailed, and it just kept going. It just kept going. Absolutely incredible. You can see there that they've actually come off the tracks because of uh, the coupling. Um, because the couplings have snagged, uh, they've they've you know the, the buffers have locked, and it's basically they've basically forced each other off the tracks. There is a proper technical name for that. Um, there is a technical term for the, the, the for the buffers to snag like that. I can't think of it off the top of my head, so if you please do know it, uh, comment below. But yeah, that's just how powerful it is. 
I, I knew it was going to succeed because I've done tests on it in the past and it, it, it will push every model I have out of the way. In fact, it'll push two out of the way. I once had this and a class 47 parked up behind it and it I, I was parking them up and I, I wasn't paying attention and before I knew it, it pushed these pair off the tracks into the wall. I was like, whoa, oh my god, you know, that's just how powerful it is. So yeah, the Class 37 by V-Trains, Y-Trains, it really is a beast of power. It's just a raw powerhouse of strength. It really, really is. Okay, yes, it's cheating, it's got traction tyres, we know that. And they're not perfect, are they? But they're there, so you might as well enjoy them. <laughs> okay, so let's um, crack on with a nice freight train, shall we? Um, there's some beautiful, uh, you'll have to excuse the uh, heater and the snowman. It's, that's how cold it is. Yeah, honestly, the snowman's not a decoration. He's real, he just appeared there because of how freezing cold it is. So I think we'll put on those lovely, um, are they coal fish hoppers? I think they are, coal fish trucks. I'm not too sure, but yeah, we'll put on those because they've got a beautiful ballasting um, load in them. It's, it's been it's been really really professionally done. So we'll put those on and get it hauling those around the layout, and that should be fantastic. And the Lego Le Le the Lego um, station is advancing, as we can see. It's coming on. They're getting it all built, which is really good. Um, so come you know, middle of December, end of December, we'll have lots of Lego train vids because uh, I've got loads of Lego trains now so, right, enough talking Will, we know how strong the Class 37 is, you don't need to prove it to us anymore let's put the camera on a tripod and get some nice shots okay, so here we are, back at the layout, back at the world's most famous piece of skirting board you know the score, and here is that wagon, it's a MHA, yeah, MHA Coalfish, um, if the camera will just show us that. Um, it's going to take a while to focus, isn't it? There we go, yeah, it's an, MA, an MHA Coalfish in EWNS. And they've been done for me. Um, there's a guy who uh, does this at a local model shop, and he, you know, he fills them with loads and stuff and makes them look dead realistic. So, so yeah, I've got eight of them, and they're all by Hornby. And I just think they're fantastic, really, really beautiful wagons, dead, dead nice quality. Now, let's just push that out of the way. And I have to say, before people write in and complain about whether any locomotives were harmed during the filming of this video, um, no. <laughs> the Hawker Sidley Kestrel is absolutely fine, as you can see. No damage at all, not even a scratch, nothing. And the star of the show, our Class 37 here, again, absolutely fine, not a problem. Nothing is wrong with either of them. They just had buffer clash. <laughs> is that it? Is that the name of the technical term? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, so there she is. I think she's on the track. Let me just check. Um, that's on, that's on, that's on, that's on. Oh, no, we've got one missing. Again, it's that middle bogey. That middle, sorry, the middle axle. Because it's free wheeling, free wheeling it often, um, you know, moves to one side and it's hard to put on. Okay, so the couplings at the back, the front of the train is just there. Look, see, I can't even push this. That's something else. It's really hard for other locomotives to push this, but it can just push them out of the way, as you saw. Now, it's not an incredibly long train, um, but it's a, it's a really nice one. It looks beautiful, I think. So, oh, wrong way. Other direction. Let's just get it coupled up to these, these coal fish uh, trucks then. Brilliant. So I will get a little red light put on the very end of this train at some point. Um, I haven't done it yet because well, I'm not too sure how long I want the train to be yet, but I will do it. So keep uh, an eye out for that video. It will be coming up in series four, um, which is coming soon. Don't worry, I've got to get through these and then we can we can start that. Trust me, I, I'm, I'm just as keen to watch it as you are. Right, okay, beautiful, beautiful uh, V-Trains, Y-Trains, EWS, Class 37, take it away. Absolutely beautiful. Just look at that. Look how nice that is. 
Doesn't it go? It works so well with these, these coal fish trucks. And the rate just keeps going and going and going. But that's where we should have a little red light just blinking. <laughs> that would be so ace. Uh, not, not like the blinking lights there of the, uh, the Lego scene, ignore them. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're running a fantastic train here. A beautiful V trains, Y trains, class 37, with a rake of Hornby coal fish trucks. You see, even multicultural. V trains, Y trains mixed with Hornby. <laughs> Brilliant. And it looks so nice, it, it works so well. And that's probably a realistic speed too. They wouldn't go much faster than that really. I mean, they're not covered wagons, are they? So there we have the Class 37 by V Trains by Trains. She's just brilliant, isn't she? And just as a quick bonus, I can even show you how good she is at low speed. So if we just slow her right down, right the way down, and just get it to come past the camera nice and slowly. Again, the, the DCC chip helps, obviously, but yeah, the, the slow speed performance here is just brilliant. Here we go, slowing right down. You can hear the wagons squeaking. And there we go. Yeah. <sighs> Brilliant. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I do. Which is why I bought a second one. I bought one in um, mainline livery. Uh, she's in crew works at the moment, actually, having her snow plows repaired. But she's, uh, she's just as good, just as strong, just as nice. So I think next I've got to get a Batman one, haven't I? Yeah, definitely. Get a Batman one and do a video on that and compare the two and see what they're like. But yeah, I absolutely love it.